Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I often say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And we certainly praise God for another day's journey, another day of opportunity to praise and to worship Him, as the Scripture says, in spirit and in truth. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Remember Christian ministries in a special way, amen, that the Lord's most perfect will be done, that we will fulfill our mission and our vision and our purpose that he has given unto us, that we fall not short of the glory of the Lord. And as we draw closer and draw nigh unto him, let us, as the scripture says, let us cleave unto the Lord with a purposing heart. And as the Bible tells us to do also, let us set our affections, our desires, on things above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And you know, that, that's half the victory. If you set your affections, your desires, on things above, then the things on this world, they don't have a, a draw on you. They don't have an allure on you because you were setting your desires and your affections on heavenly things as opposed to earthly things. And the Lord knows that you have need of earthly things, so he's going to provide. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. But if you seek after the things that uh, pertain to riches and gold, um, the Bible says you'll fall into many snares and, and hurtful lusts. But if you set your affections on things above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of the Father, the Bible tells us wherever your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. So as we uh, draw our hearts in and get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, if there's anyone that has a specific prayer request, you can certainly let it be known at this time. Also, too, we want to pray for those that are still traveling over the highways and the byways, those that are on vacation, some people that are on vacation. <laughs> let us pray for them that the Lord will bless them. Pray for uh, countries. Let us pray for America in a special way and all those foreign countries, uh, let us pray for them as well. Uh, First Lady Quinn, praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. We certainly will 
say a prayer for uh, Stanley Dorsey that the Lord will touch his body, amen, in a special way. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's why he tells us men should always pray and not to faint. Amen. Thank you. All right, if there be none other prayer requests, we'd like to ask the church to stand. And those of you that are uh, online with us, if you put your prayer request in the chat, uh, we'll certainly double back and pray uh, for you in the comment section. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the health and strength that we have in our own bodies. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every request and every unspoken request. We ask you, Lord, that you're blessed by your power through your anointing. Lord, we cast all of our cares upon you. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. We need you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you manifest your greatness, manifest your power, send forth your deliverance, be a hedge of protection about us from danger seen and unseen. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on tonight. Let your spirit, let your anointing rest, rule, and abide. Let your most perfect will be done. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We certainly thank God. Thank God. It's unable, uh, by virtue of our anniversary, for 31 years to be with you on last Wednesday. But I'm so glad to be with you on this Wednesday. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I miss the saints. I miss the Bible study. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It means something uh, to be with the, the saints of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I want you to turn with me over to the book of St. James, St. James, and we're still dealing with our practical series on, well, our series on practical living, amen. James is a book that deals with practical living, uh, how to live uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I have come across great teachers of the word of God that taught holiness and uh, except it's taught with how to live it, 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 is, it has no, I don't want to say it has no value, but uh, you've got to also be taught how to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what James, James focuses on. He focuses in on practical living. Not only the power of the gospel, but how to carry it out in your daily life. And unless you carry it out in your daily life, your knowledge of it, it really, ah, there it goes again. I don't want to say it has no value, but uh, you must live this thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen? Amen. So let us drop down uh, to James uh, chapter number 2. And ask I'm Duncan Shoot, uh, Elder Crosby, if she would read for me. Amen. Uh, St. James, chapter number two, uh, beginning with verse 14. St. James, chapter number two, beginning with verse 14. What does it profit, my brother? For a man say he has faith and have not works, mm -hmm. can faith save him? Now, James is, is, is asking a question. He's asking a question. Now, he's actually asking two questions uh, there in that one particular verse. And uh, what he's after is uh, one must demonstrate their faith dealing with a demonstration of faith. <coughs> and uh, the Apostle Paul, he had taught that uh, in order to be saved, you could be saved 
without works. You can be saved without works. And what Paul was after was uh, talking about those that uh, uh, were believing that you had to be circumcised in order to be saved. That was the teaching back then. That was the doctrine back then that, that they were trying to implement because they were coming off of the law. And uh, back then, they, they had actually had a big uh, council where in James, he even presided over uh, the brother of Jesus. He, uh, because they were, they were talking about uh, whether or not to offer up sacrifices and uh, being circumcised. You know, uh, in order to be saved. And when Paul taught uh, that in order to be saved, you've got to uh, be, uh, be, be, salvation is without works. Justification is without works. So what Paul was teaching them was that in order to be saved, you just have to have faith in Christ. You have to have faith in Christ. So uh, they took that doctrine and, and literally ran with it to wherein it became a problem. And the problem was, was they thinking, well, I don't have to demonstrate any acts of faith. All I got to do is just profess my faith in, in daily living, in daily living. So all they, they would say, and they would do things, and uh, say things, having said it in a religious type of way, without having any actions behind it. In other words, having a great swelling testimony without any power, without any anything to show for it would be like an individual coming to you, you want to hire them uh, to do a job for you. And when they come to do the job, or when, they, when you interview them, they, they say they can do this, they can do that, they can do that, they can do this. Have, have, uh, uh, whatever you need, they say they can do it. So you hire them. And then when you hire them, and it comes down to them doing what they said they could do, it doesn't match up. Uh, it doesn't match up. In other words, they had a, a, a profession without any, any, any acts of their profession. So what they were literally saying was dead, so to speak. You know, it, was, it, it, it didn't match up. And that's what James is at. If, if an individual is going to profess their faith, then there should be some deeds behind it that matches up. It would be like an individual saying, well, Lord, uh, uh, I believe that you are my protector. I believe that you are my provider. But every time a situation comes up, the individual uh, doesn't act on what they believe. They, they, get, they get depressed. They, they close themselves in. They begin to worry uh, because they're not showing any evidence of what they have said. It would be like, uh, 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 I believe that the, the Lord can uh, deliver me from all evil. But when evil shows up, the individual runs and hides. The scripture says if you faint in adversity, your strength is small. In other words, if you faint in adversity, then, then you lack the faith to believe God. That's what James is at. That's what he's at. Can you read that again for us? What does it profit, my brother? Though a man say he has faith, uh -huh. and have not works. Now, there's, there's a, a, a profession of faith and there's, then there's a possession of faith. I can, I can profess faith all day long. Talk about how great, uh, uh, how, how mighty, and, and, and how wonderful all day long to profess it. But, but do I really 
possession. That's what James is talking about. He's talking about a possession of faith. When an individual possesses faith, they act on it. They live by it. Amen? Uh, uh, when an individual uh, trying, to, trying to get into the nuts and bolts of what the problem is, there's a problem. That's why James is addressing it. The problem is there was a lot of uh, uh, profession of faith without the possession of faith being manifested. The Bible says we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. Live by the faith that you po po uh, possess or profess. Live by that faith. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And that's what he's at. So read that again. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Elder. <laughs> We're going to get to that. The... What does the prophet, my brother? Uh huh. So a man say they have faith. Now he's asking the question. He's saying, what does it benefit? What does it benefit? What's, what's the given here? Uh, that prophet, uh, my brother, though a man say or pro professes, that he have faith and and not it's not being manifest by what? By works or deeds. Amen? It's not being made manifest by deeds. It's like how the scripture says uh, love is. If if love is not demonstrated, it's like a tingling symbol, sounding brass. It's like an empty can being kicked down the road. Amen, with no substance in it. Same way with, with, with this kind of faith that James is talking about. The faith that Paul was referring to, uh, that they were running with, was he was talking about salvation. Amen? And, and, and you can't be saved other than believing in Jesus Christ. They took that to mean that uh, uh, all I need to do is just talk about faith and I'm saved. Uh, not practically live it, not live it out. There's a lot of people that don't live this thing out. Amen. We've got to live this thing out. If you, if you, if you believe it, you'll live it. Amen. There's a lot of people that 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 say they believe. Amen. Now, have you ever come across people that said I believe, and then when you examine their lifestyle, are they living? Really what they say they believe. Amen? And, and I'm going to say yes. <laughs> you live what you believe. Amen? You really do. You really live what you believe. If, if you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, you live that. If, if you don't, you profess it and, and the proof will be in the pudding, so to speak. You follow? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So he says, what does a prophet, my brethren, if though a man say, read? What does a prophet, my brethren, uh -huh. though a man say he has faith and have not works? All right, now what advantage is that? What gain is that? Me just talking, saying I got faith, but I don't have anything to back it up. Amen? In other words, People ought to see your faith. Your faith has to be made manifest. People ought to see your faith. Amen? If you're going to say it, you're going to speak it, live by it. Amen? That's what James is at. He said, live by it. Amen? If you believe Jesus is Lord, live that. Huh? If you believe that the Lord will bless you and keep you, huh? believe that way. <laughs> Amen. I, I want to live that way. Thank you, Jesus. If, if I'm professing that the Lord is my life and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Uh, if I'm professing that the Lord is the strength of my life, uh, we believe that, don't we? Hallelujah. Then we ought to live that way. Hallelujah. On a daily basis. That's what changes that. Hallelujah. Now, 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 if you say it, he said, what profit is it that you saying it and not living it? But there's no gain in that. There's no profit in that. 
The gain and the profit is when you say it and live it. When you profess it and, and or you proclaim it and possess it. Amen? Hallelujah. So notice then, he says, what? Let the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he have faith, amen, and have not what? Works. Then he says, ask the question, can faith save him? Can that type of faith save you? And the, the answer is no. In other words, he's saying, if you say you trust in the Lord, but then really don't trust in him, you can't be delivered that way. You can't be saved that way. Uh, there has to be a proclamation and some works behind it, some actions behind it. Amen? Hallelujah. You can talk all day. I've, I've come across people. Uh, I've hired people that, 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 that told me they could do A through Z huh? and, 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 and made it sound real good. Huh? Hang it up. And, and when, you, when you hire them for the job, uh, the testimony and the words don't match up. Huh? What profit uh, me for hiring them to do the job and it doesn't match up? Huh? I'm, I'm lost in London. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And that's, and that's what it is. You, you come across people that talk a big game. Huh? 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 Great swelling words. Uh, but when it comes down to, to, to when the rubber needs to meet the road, there, there is no action. Amen? And then their, their great brush swelling words are in vain. Amen? That's what James is at. All right? Practical living. All right? Read. What's the next verse say? Can they say it here? Uh huh. All right, now you 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 walking by faith, and you walking by not, not by sight, and you come across somebody that's that's destitute, uh, that's naked, no clothes, destitute of daily food. Read. And what do you say unto them? Uh huh. Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and be. Now that's the problem. That's the problem that James was was directly hitting. He was hitting those people that that were religious without any works. They, they just believed, well, uh, I'm just going to pray for you, and I believe that the Lord will help you and heal you, but not showing, not showing any compassion toward the individual. Having it in your possession to give or to help and, and, and not really doing what the Lord has said. The Lord, the Bible said, Jesus, you know, I, I thought about that parable, the parable I'm about to talk about. I thought about it uh, 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 earlier this week. I said, man, Lord, we ain't really talked about that one in a long time. And that's the one where Jesus said, uh, uh, he was making a parable and he said, uh, that he was naked uh, and you clothed me I was hungry and you fed me uh, and he said when, when Lord did we see you naked when dear Lord did we see you hungry and he said when you give it unto the least of my brother huh? you've done it unto me amen that's, that's what faith in action is uh, the giving of thyself helping those that are in need now, to just pray, oh, I'm just going to pray for you, that the Lord, that the Lord bless you. Amen? Uh, that's all well and good, but when it's in your power, when it's in your ability, the Lord expects you to do good work. Amen? The Lord expects you to help your brother and your sister. Amen? To give them what they, that's faith right there. Amen? To help your brother and your sister. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all remember? Uh, uh, well, that doesn't really hit the context, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, Y'all remember when that one rich man, he had a whole bunch of goods. Amen? And a and, and whole bunch of food. He built his bonds. Right? Build them up. Uh, and then he had excess. And he said, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down the bonds I have, and I'm going to build bigger ones. Amen? That was the wrong thing to do. Am I right? What he should have did was to give to those that were in need. That's what faith is. That's what faith is. Helping those that are in need. Amen? Am I right? Hallelujah. And, and notice, we, we in James, uh, we in James chapter number 2, 
Verse 16. All right, read, read, uh, read 15 again. If a brother or sister be naked, uh-huh, and destitute of daily food, yes, and one of you say unto them, uh-huh, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, uh-huh, If you allow me to say it that way, if you have it in your ability to give, you have it in your possession to help. The Bible tells us whatever you find uh, your hands to do, do it. Uh, that's faith. That's walking by faith. Helping those that are in need. Amen? Helping those that, that, that have a legitimate need. Because you know there's some folk out there <laughs> that don't have legitimate needs. Uh, thank you, Lord. You follow the Lord. I pray the Lord give you discernment. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, I, and I'm not talking about being judges of evil thoughts, but just giving you the spirit of discernment. <laughs> Amen. But 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 when there's a legitimate need and it's within your ability, this is practical living. Help. Amen? Just don't say be warm and feel. Help! Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, read. What's it say? 17. Yes. Even so faith. Yes. If it have not works, it's dead being alone. Now notice what he says. Even so faith, if it, if it is not accompanied by action, uh, it's, it's what? Even so faith, Now notice, dead, that your faith, if you don't have works with your faith, if an individual doesn't have works with their faith, their faith is what? Dead. And, and that word dead means destitute of power. It has no power. Amen? It has no power. Destitute of power. It's inoperable. It's not recognized by God. I want my faith to be recognized by God. Amen? We, we live by faith. God, 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 if you live it, now I want y'all to use your spiritual minds here. When you're in trouble and you call on God, God sees you and, and, and answers you by faith. Uh, uh, without faith, it's impossible to what? Please God. It's impossible for God to respond to you by faith. Uh, in other words, if you're not operating in faith, it's impossible for God to respond to you. Uh, I want y'all to let this sit here just for a moment. Because God operates by faith. Uh, Pastor? Your faith demonstrates your trust in God. Yeah. If you don't have the faith to believe in, then you don't trust him. You don't trust him. You don't get what you have. You're right. So it negates, it, it, it stops. Amen. Uh, it, 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 it. Your, your request then falls on dead, dead ears. God doesn't hear you. Amen? Because he responds to faith. Amen? God operates by faith. And when you don't uh, uh, communicate with God by faith, which shows and demonstrates your trust, uh, then, then you're not going to get what you desire. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and, and she mentioned that word trust. When I, when, in my studies, I've come to find out that when you trust God, it like pops all of his buttons. <laughs> oh my God. When you show it for trust in God, that moves God. Huh? That, 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 oh my God. God will move heaven and earth for you because you trust in him. Amen? That like fool. You, you know how people come to you and, and, and make you feel good? Huh? Trust makes God feel great. <laughs> and, and, and when you demonstrate you trust God, oh my God, God, God will move for you. Amen? God will open up doors for you. God will fight for you. Amen? Huh? God, oh, God will stand up for you. Uh, you say, Lord, I trust you, and, and step out on the deep, oh, God will uphold you. Amen? Uh, he won't let you be confounded. Uh, he won't allow the enemy to consume you. Amen? Hallelujah. Why? Because you trusted me. Uh, 
Uh, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord uh, and who his hope is. <laughs> you got confidence in him. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Read that verse again, Pastor. Even so faith. Even so faith.
me tonight. You want God to respond to you, don't you? You want God to move on your behalf, don't you? So launch out into the deep. And walk by faith and not by sight. I stand on the promises of God. You ain't got to figure nothing out. Let him figure it out. Uh, let him work it out. Uh, be crazy. Can <laughs> I trust God? Uh, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe you're going to do it. Uh, Lord, I don't see how you're going to do it, but it ain't up for me to see it. Uh, it ain't up for me to add to the most shot. It ain't up for me, it ain't up for me to, 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 to surmise it. Uh, and, but Lord, that's your business. Uh, uh, but my business is to trust in you. My business is to stand on your word. Uh, and Lord, I know you won't, but if you let me fail, uh, I know you're still able to deliver me. That's the most. I've got a most. Uh, and that's the kind of faith God wants. That's the kind of faith God wants to see. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your faith is telling you no weapon formed against you shall prosper, believe that. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. My God in heaven. You know, there, there was a young man that was with Joshua, and he was wondering how they was going to win the battle because, you know, I've I come to realize that every time God, God sets you up in battle, it's always against the odds. Uh, it's always, the, the enemy always outnumbers you. Uh, uh, always outnumbers you. And even when you go into battle and you outnumber the enemy, God will tell you to get rid of some of them. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then, then, then Joshua told, praise said, Lord, touch the young man's eyes. Let him see what's going on up in here. Uh, that's what we need. We need, Lord, touch my eyes. Uh, to let me see. Hallelujah. What's going on up in here? Hallelujah. So we can believe our God. Amen. So we can trust in our God. Hallelujah. When you, when you, uh, your back is against the wall, and 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 often heard uh, Bishop Ratcliffe preach, and he said, You plus God is the majority. Amen. Uh, I was driving home Sunday, and that thing resonated in my mind. He said, he said, God said, look, every time you come up against a battle, you're always on number. And that's the way it is. That's the way I've designed it. So I can show my power. So I can show my anointing. So I can show my strength. Oh, at least you say, you got the victory. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to just praise our God. That's faith. Amen. That's faith in action. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the truth. Can I tell you the truth? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, uh, 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 whatever you have right now in your life, uh, you've got it against all odds anyway because God was blessing you. Amen. God is anointed you. Amen. God is the one that's keeping you. God is the one that is watching over you. God is the one that is providing for you. You have not made every step right, uh, but God. Uh, and if God be for us, who then can be against us? Hallelujah. We got to give all credit and glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. If your bills is paid, give God credit. Uh, uh, if you got food in your cupboard, give God credit. Amen. Uh, if you got a place to lay your head, give God credit. Uh, if you're in your right mind, give God credit. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all with me tonight? Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, where we at? What verse we in? We in James. We in James chapter number 2, verse 18. Praise the Lord, Sister Catherine. All right, I see you. All right, where we at? Two and eighteen. Hey, come on, son. Let's just give God. Hold on for a minute. Let's just give God a praise. The Lord just spoke to us tonight. Hey, he don't say nothing else. He just spoke to us tonight. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. All right, two and 
18. Something in you 
Hallelujah. That, that believes God's word that's causing you to walk by faith. Uh, and now, I'm going to hit it. It's, it's reciprocal. Because the Bible says, faith coming by what? And that by what? Every time you present yourself uh, to hear the word of the Lord, you're increasing your faith. Uh, you're increasing your faith. And every time you hear that word and you respond to it, uh, you're, you're, you're increasing that faith. You're increasing that faith. To hear it and not respond to it is dead. But to hear it and to respond to it is an increase. Uh, it's an increase. Uh, it's an increase. So every time, hallelujah, you do what thus saith the word of the Lord, you're increasing your faith. You're moving from one level of faith to the next level of faith. Hallelujah. You, you're trusting in your God. God is, God is setting you up. Hallelujah. God is moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. God is, is giving you all of his great and precious promises. Why? Because you are operating by faith. Living it. Practical living. Amen? Now, I'm going I'm to switch gears just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. The problem in the book of James that, that he's after is this. Is that a number of people were professing to be godly but not living God. Let me say that again. You don't want to be on the side of, of the Lord saying, depart from me, ye work of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I preached in your name. I taught in your name. I gave in your name. Huh? Those are ungodly people. They knew of God but decided to not to live according to God. In other words, to live as though he did not exist. Whew. That's, that's, a bad, that's a bad place to be in. Oh, wow, I like that. I like that. Having a form of godliness. But what? You don't want to deny this anointing. You don't want to deny his power. Amen? And you can deny it two ways. In this, in practical living, and then uh, 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 in one's own mind, not believing that what God's word has said, all lives shall have their part in the lake. Amen. We don't wanna, we don't wanna deny what God's word has said. Man should not live by what? But by what? Every word that does what? I don't know. You want to believe God. <clears throat> you want to trust God. Amen? If God has said it, it's settled. I came out the clouds and argued with them. <laughs> what, what, what benefit is that? Huh? I, can't, I can't be a sourpuss. Huh? Be a powder. Amen? I can't kick and holler and scream and get God to move and bend on my, on my behalf. The Bible says God resists the proud. And he gives what? Grace to the humble. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. My God. Woo! I'm about to get a shaver up in here. <laughs> Lord, help us! Uh, Lord, just give me the strength to do what you said do. Without, without adding my two cents in. Don't let me be wise in my own conceit. Huh? Am I right? Lord, just, just let me be simple. Let me just do what you said do and get it done. Uh, how and how you said do. Am I right? <laughs> let me just mind my own business. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and mind God's business. Am I right? <laughs> Just help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help us. Help us. 
If we focus, like the scripture says, set our affections on things above. When we, when we do that, that's victory. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Focus on heavenly things. Focus on righteous things. We live here in this earth. You got to go through the motions here on this earth. But, 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 but you're of the world. But, but you're in the world, but not of the world. Am I right? Focus on, on what God has said. Let that be your comfort. Let that be your peace. Amen? You know, I, I find out. Sometimes, you know, I get up in the morning, I'm coming, coming, coming here to the church. And if I if I don't have, if I'm not focused on Jesus, if I'm not praying, if I'm not having some word going on or some gospel music going on. It don't feel right. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Just, just those little actions, you feel current. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because there's something in me. Huh? There's something in you that cries out for holiness. There's something in you that, that, that wants you to build up. Alright, where we at, Pastor Doug? We gotta move on. Alright, verse 19. 
say one thing and do another. You don't want to say one thing and do another. What is that called? A hypocrite. Double. Did James teach about that? He said a double-minded person is what? No, no stability. So that tells you God wants you to have stability, right? Jesus taught, he said, if your eye is single, uh, your body is full of light, meaning that if you're focused in on me, you have, you're full of my revelations, which is light. Amen? But if your eye uh, be evil, that means double-mindedness, your body is full of darkness. Uh, evil ways. Hypocrisy. We don't, he doesn't want us to be like that. Am I right? I don't want to be like that. And, and you know, you got to fight not to be like that. Be honest. You got to fight not to be double-minded. Amen? Because the enemy, he's shrewd. Huh? He's, a, he's a deceiver. He's an accuser of the brethren. And, and he knows how to manipulate us. Huh? That's why he told us to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So I can't deceive myself. I've been in church 30, 31 years. I'm strong now in my own life. Boy, have I missed the boat. The Bible says, be strong in what? The Lord. And in the power of what? His might. You know, I'm so conscious of that now. <clears throat> when I hear people talk, right? They tell me about their own lifestyle. And, and they, they may say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm strong in my own strength. They'll say phrases like that. And... And the Holy Ghost, my radar, I pick up on it. Right? Meaning that we're not strong in our own might. We're not strong in our own power. I'm, I didn't make it 31 years on my own strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I'm here because of the strength of the Lord. Amen. Without me, you can do nothing. I believe that. <laughs> Do y'all believe that? Yeah. Hallelujah. And now the enemy will try to be contrary to that. Make you think false things. Won't he do that? Amen. He'll make you think, I'm up here preaching a good message. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Make you think, uh, uh, Pastor Quinn throwing off on me. No. That's when past that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, I've learned not to even get up here and preach my own issues. Uh, that, ain't, that ain't God. Amen. Pass that. Amen. Enemy will tell you a uh, 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 so and so talking about. Them. And they could be talking about something totally different. We think we got the preeminence in all conversations. That ain't good. Enemy, have you walk in? Uh, uh, you dress real nice. Enemy tell you, uh, you, you what you got on is ugly and it don't look right. You follow me? And ain't nothing wrong with what you got on. Looking good. But that's how the enemy operates. He does the opposite. Trying to get confusion. Go. Doesn't he try to do that? Try to stir up stuff. Doesn't he try to do that? And he's good at it. Let's, not, let's be honest. Is the enemy good at his job? Absolutely. So therefore, in order to combat 
the enemy. I've got to do what God has said. Isn't God greater than his job? Greater. <laughs> Hallelujah. Greater. That's who we trust in. Am I right? Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 what do I do? When those negative thoughts come to my mind, I got to cast them down. Amen? I got to cast them down. I was listening to a sermon. This was years ago. This was probably in the 90s when the Lord first saved me. Uh, it was Bishop Nehemiah Smith. And uh, he, he, had a, he was tired time. He was tired time preacher. But they called him a preacher machine. But anyway, I had one of his tapes. I was listening to it. And, and, and he helped me uh, uh, get the victory over offenses. He said, as soon as uh, uh, somebody says something to you that offends you, you automatically go into a mode of forgiveness and thank you, Jesus. Uh, and he said it in such a way that was tied to him. You know, it was funny. But, but I got what he said. Uh, automatic. He said, automatic, automatic, go to forgiveness. And, and thank you, Jesus. You know? And, and, and I tried it. And it works. You don't know, let the fence set in. Amen? That's a weapon. That's a weapon. Y'all with me? All right, where we at, Pastor? We almost done. Now notice, notice what he said. Will thou know, or oh what? Vain man. Vain man. What verse is he in? All right, read it right there. Will thou know, O oh vain man, read? That faith without works is dead. That faith without works is dead. That word vain uh, literally means empty. Empty. Which literally connects to Ignorant. I don't want to say the word stupid, because uh, y'all get me out of context when I say that. But empty. Vain. <clears throat> empty. Without knowledge. Without understanding. You don't want to be without knowledge. You don't want to be without understanding. You want to understand what the will of the Lord is. You want to understand what the Lord requires of thee. Read that verse again. But thou wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Now notice, he asks another question. Faith without what? Works is what? Dead. Uh, destitute of power, inoperable. You're not operating by faith. Whatever you're doing is destitute of power and it's inoperable. Amen. Read. Uh-huh. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac the son of the altar? Uh, now, he's talking about Abraham now, bringing some practical, practical understanding. Abraham, uh, uh, he believed God, didn't he? Huh? God, God told him to offer up your son Isaac. And at this point in Abraham's life, he didn't, the uh, Bible doesn't record where he had a conversation with Sarah. He just got up one morning when God had told him and he did it quickly. Amen. Didn't allow the enemy to set in. That's, 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 that's a sign of maturity. When God gives you an assignment, you do it quickly. Uh, if you allow, uh, do be slowful with it, the enemy has room to persuade you otherwise. Amen? And won't he do it? Absolutely. So, so Abraham got up, showing that he had faith, believing that God was able to raise that young lad up from the dead why? Because God had already promised. 
huh? that from his seed, all the generations of the world were going to be blessed. Didn't it? And Abraham believed God, didn't he? Huh? And, and, and God, God boosted Abraham's faith. When, when, when God dealt with Abraham, he said, Abraham, a uh, 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 blessing, I'm going to bless you. And because I can't find nobody greater to swear by, I'm going to swear by myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. To give Abraham a full assurance uh, of faith. We have that same word. Uh, that is a full assurance of faith. We ought to believe God. Amen? Hallelujah. We ought to trust God. Am I right? All right, read. Let's say. Uh-huh. See, it's not how faith brought with this work. Now, no. See, see, see how faith uh, 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 brought, equipped, or, 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 or was affirmed by his faith. Amen? In other words, his works affirmed his faith. Amen? Your works affirm or declare your faith in God. Read. And thy faith was, and thy works was faith made perfect. Now, uh, made complete. Faith is not complete without action. There has to be some action to make it complete. Without, without, without the actions, it's just words. But with the actions, it transforms into complete faith. Am I right? Hallelujah. Oh, beautiful. That's a beautiful Bible study. I'm enjoying it. All right, read. Uh huh. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God. Abraham did what? Believed God. He believed God. Now, that has to be your testimony of faith. That you what? Believe God. And what proves that you believe God? Your action. Now, what James is after, I got to get back to it, was practical living. He's not talking about you climbing a mountain. He's talking about you living according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Believe that word. Stand on that word. Amen? You don't, you don't have to build a uh, go climb Mount Rushmore. Huh? You don't have to uh, go off to India. I'm just saying. Unless God call you there. Huh? You ain't got to do all that. Just live on a daily basis the word of faith. What God has said. People struggle with that. Why? Because the enemy, because of their own desire, because of, of not their own uh, wanting uh, to exalt themselves above God. We can go into a myriad of reasons. Amen? But, but what God is after is to live on a daily basis according to his word. That's what the kind of faith he wants you to have. Amen? God told, uh, in the book of Daniel, he talks about uh, great exploits. And what great exploits is, is just refusing the evil and choosing the good. On a daily basis, you want to choose God. On a minute-by-minute minute situation, second-by-second second situation, you want to choose God. God says, resist evil. Huh? Resist the devil, and he'll what? Flee. Temptation comes to our mind on a regular basis. If you resist it, just as the word of the Lord has said, God will uphold his end and cause the enemy to flee. If you give in to it, the enemy got you. But if you resist it, if you make up in your mind that I'm going to be steadfast, I'm going to be unmovable, that I'm going to always abound in the work of the Lord, that has to become your thoughts. That has to become 
your desires. That has to become your meat, your meditation. And when I say it has to become your meditation, watch this. You've got to meditate on how, Lord, am I going to perform what your word has said. In other words, you've got to think on scenarios. On, 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 Lord, if this happens, this is how I'm going to respond. If this happens, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be true to what your word has said. I've made up my mind. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. No turning back. No looking back. I'm going straight ahead. And like my echo no shot. If I perish, I perish. That's my meditation. That's my musing thoughts. Echo no shot. That's what I'm going to do. My
Somebody has to manifest it. Somebody has to prove that. Why not you? Why not me? Why not us? That sounds like a song. Why not us? <laughs> All right, read, Pastor. We got to go. And the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God. Now, Abraham believed God. Read. It was imputed unto him for righteousness. Uh -huh, because, God, because of Abraham's belief, God responded to him in righteousness. Because of your belief, God will respond to you in righteousness. Read. And he was called a friend of God. Woo, called a friend of God. I am a friend of God. <laughs> Read. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. All right. By works a man is declared righteous not just by saying I believe. Read. Likewise also was not Rahab a harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Uh huh. And Rahab. If you read that story, it's beautiful. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I really admire what she did. I know she lied, but, you know, uh, she wasn't under uh, grace. But, 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 but Rahab, she believed the report that, that God had, had, when he had gone to the Egyptians, that, that, that she reverenced God and she believed God and so, therefore, her actions prove, show that she believed God. Right? Now, she believed God putting her own self in danger. Huh? Those, those, those army guys that came there looking for those spies, they could have killed her. Huh? But she was like what Jesus said. Don't fear him that's able to kill the body but fear him that is able to kill the body and soul and cast it into hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. She believed. Yeah. Amen. Mind made up. Amen. Believe. Have your mind made up. I read. For as the body without the spirit is dead, uh -huh. so faith without works is dead also. Amen. So, amen. All right. Give God a praise. I thank God for this Bible class. Demonstrate. You gotta demonstrate your faith. Amen. All right. Any questions on our Bible study? You know, I, I was listening to you and um, when people talk about Abraham, <laughs> I said, you know, his family really was put to the test. First God said, get away from your family. Then, 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 then the white girl around the child gives you to have a baby in the outside of the little doctor and show you. You know, and, and, and you have to trust the kids. You know, that's yeah, the I like that. That's the lesson that your family. I like that. Well, that's the thing that's important. Yeah. When you get the blood of Jesus, that's the only blood that will watch you see. Yeah. Dick, I'm, I'm with you totally. You know, when your faith is being tried, you got to persevere. Amen? And those that are close to you will try you the most. <laughs> Hallelujah. But still, you got a person here. Uh, Mother Davis. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I'm praying for something. Uh -huh. I don't see it. Yeah. I have faith enough to know that God is going to give it to me. Yeah. When I do the work of praying or whatever God asks me to do, to read, uh, uh, fast, whatever it might be, then God bless me with whatever I'm asking for. Then that's substance, whatever, what, what, what I ask for. And yeah. And it came into existence. Therefore, you can see faith. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. I like how you put that. Thank you, Jesus. It represents that substance yeah. of things hopeful. Yeah. God will manifest it. Yeah, I thought about that when you said faith can be seen. Yeah. You know, it can be seen once it's manifest. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. That's that's how it's that's how it's, that's how it's seen once it's manifest. 
leading. All right, well, we thank God for the Bible study on tonight. Those that, uh, that desire to give through title, uh, you're welcome to give in such a way. We'll see you once again on Sunday morning. Amen. 11 o'clock. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name.